Hi, we are with uh, Ronald Bailey. He is science correspondent for Reason magazine and author of the book Liberation Biology, The Moral and Scientific Case for the Biotech Revolution. Um, what is biotech? Biotechnology is, a, is defined basically as being able to take genes from one organism and put them into another organism. In other words, to take a gene that you might find in a crop uh, that would be beneficial, perhaps it would pr protect a crop against a disease or a pest, and put that gene in a corn crop or a wheat crop or a rice crop or something like that, and do it very precisely in this particular context. So it's basically shifting genes from one organism to another. Why do you speak about the biotech revolution? Uh, this technology has enabled humanity to be able to, to do things much more rapidly, scientists to do much more rapidly, things that it took a long time to do. In order to improve crops in the past, it took a long process of crossbreeding crops from one variety to another in order to make sure that the, the thing that you wanted, the benefit that you wanted, would get in from one crop to another. And that took generations and more than a decade of work for each time you did that. This you can speed it up much more rapidly. And so it is a real revolution. It, it's speeding up the process of getting good new crops out to farmers uh, by cutting the time at least by uh, two-thirds. Um, should we fear frankenfoods or frankenpeople? No, we should not fear frankenfoods. Frankenfoods is a scare term used by anti-biotech uh, uh, anti activists. Basically what we should be thinking about are why these crops how these crops are improving uh, the way farmers uh, can grow them. They use less land to grow more crops. In other words, they've improved the productivity. Uh, the food is, is, according to the National Academies of most major countries in the world, uh, the Royal Society in Britain, the United States National Academy of Sciences, the Indian Academy of Sciences, the Brazilian, uh, the Chinese, these crops are, are beneficial to farmers and they're beneficial to consumers. They lower prices and uh, and they uh, improve the, the productivity. So why should or why would someone attack biotechnology? Um, part of it is a misconception. Uh, people misunderstand what it is, uh, and they think it's something new and different and they're just afraid of technologies. But the other thing is that you must keep in mind is that uh, environmentalism to some people is an ideology. It is not fact-based at all. They're not worried about the science. And they see this as an attack on, on corporations, on capitalism, because you know, the, the advanced countries of the world are developed this, this technology, and so that's what they're doing. You always have to keep in mind that activists are like anybody else. They have something to sell, and that something is fear. Um, they have to make you worry about a problem in order for you to send them donations or to get donations from foundations. Some of them may be sincere, but a lot of them aren't. And um, in, in, in which areas is biotechnology developing the most? Well, uh, more generally speaking, outside the crop field, it's going very rapidly in pharmaceuticals. Uh, it would be all kinds of new medicines are coming out that are able to treat uh, uh, cancers, for example, multiple sclerosis. There are going to be some vaccines that are being developed in this way. So that, the biomedical area is moving much more rapidly because people see the benefits of that much more clearly. Uh, but it, it, the crop biotechnology area is also expanding very rapidly. It is the most uh, uh, rapidly ac accepted technology by farmers than any in the entire history of agriculture. Uh, for, it has grown over 60 folds in the 10 years that it's been available to people. In, in, in practical terms, how does this help uh, developing countries, the populations of developing countries? Well, one of the things, uh, for example, uh, studies have basically shown that of the 10 million farmers around the world that are using biotech crops, now 90% of them are living in developing countries. Uh, there, there are poorer farmers, uh, have less resources available to them, and it benefits them by boosting their incomes and boosting their productivity. Uh, for example, uh, in, in India, uh, there's a good example of that, a cotton crop that was, that's protected against insects using biotech methods, boosted the productivity of Indian farmers 80% in comparison to farmers who didn't use the biotech crop, and it boosted their incomes by more than double in that period of time. It's a huge benefit. And uh, here in Guatemala in particular, are there any projects? Uh, I'm, I'm unaware of any that are commercialized at this point in Guatemala, though there's a lot of space for that. There are crops that would be very useful to Guatemala. For example, maize crops that are, that are pest protected would be probably very valuable 
in Guatemala, and I'm hoping that uh, Guatemala will see fit to use these technologies and, and enable their farmers to benefit from it. Well, thank you very much for sharing with us, and thank you.